When asked about diseases in Native Americans, most people think of smallpox, measles, and syphilis brought by conquistadors after Columbus arrived at the New World. Few would think, however, of modern Native Americans living today that are challenged with living with a white man's disease. Unfortunately, many tribes are faced with conditions because of European and American interaction and intervention throughout history. Diabetes is among one of the most prevalent of these health problems among Native Americans today. Type 2 diabetes is a lifelong condition in which the pancreas doesn't produce enough insulin to keep blood glucose levels at a normal level. The body can't react to these low levels of insulin, the hormone that produces and controls blood sugars. Diabetes is greatly affected by diet, exercise, and genetics. The Pima Indians are a perfect example of a population that are predisposed in each of these three categories. The O Odoham, the river people, have lived in the Sonoran Desert along the Gila River in modern-day southern Arizona and northern Mexico for at least 2,000 years. In the 1600s, Spanish conquistadors exploring the area for Spain renamed the tribe the Pima. The Pima were excellent farmers, utilizing the river through complex irrigation systems. Their native diet consisted of fiber and vitamin-filled foods like wheat, corn, beans, pumpkins, watermelon, squash, peas, and other healthy and natural grains. They were also renowned runners, working as cavalry scouts for the Spanish and later U.S. militaries. The Pima are also well known for their generosity towards and peaceful relationships with white traders and settlers, which historically has led to interactions with these settlers that have extended longer than other tribes in the United States. Huge changes began to hit the Pima, however, after Mexico won its independence from Spain in the year 1821. In 1846, Arizona was given to the United States after the Spanish-American War. Beginning in the 1870s, the American government began constructing irrigation routes away from the Pima and towards the farms and homes of the new white settlers. This led to a 40-year massive famine and widespread poverty among the Pima. The federal government eventually stepped in and began handing out canned and artificially manufactured foods on the reservation. This began the downward spiral of the Pima diet away from their healthy, traditional one in the Gila Indian River community. Things began looking up in the 1930s due to the construction of the Coolidge Dam on the Gila River, which created the San Carlos Reservoir. This new water source allowed the Pima to redevelop irrigation channels to allow them to go back to their agricultural roots. This led to more jobs and a bigger concentration on further developing the reservation into a strong community. This also, however, did not help any against the Pima fight against diabetes. The Pima of the Gila River Indian community have the highest prevalence of type 2 diabetes than any other ethnic group today. They have been working with the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Disease for the past 30 years to help find causes and a cure for diabetes. The Pima are an excellent population to conduct research. Most Pima traditionally live on the reservation together and intermarry with other Pima, providing an isolated group for study. Why then are the Pima so susceptible to diabetes? For one, modern tribal members are less physically active than their farmer and runner ancestors. Another reason is their diet. Since the drought took away their means to eat a traditional healthy diet and the government introduced manufactured food, the Pima have followed a traditionally American diet filled with processed sugars, fats, and carbohydrates, leading to high levels of obesity, a leading cause of diabetes among the Pima. This fits in well with the theory of the presence of an inherited thrifty gene in the Pima. This gene was extraordinarily helpful in the past. It would conserve glucose during times of feasts so that the body would have it reserved for energy in times of famine. Now that food is consistently and easily available, this gene now causes high levels of glucose. The presence of this hereditary gene, along with environmental factors like poor diet and low physical activity, are reasons for the high prevalence of type 2 diabetes in the Pima tribe. The, pre- the Pima refuse to be held back by diabetes. They are strong and proud traditional people that continue to fight for a better quality of life for their tribe. They lead the way for Native American health care, health education, and are trailblazing a way for all those affected by diabetes to seek treatment and find new ways to prevent the disease.